All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. So I emailed you this evening the tonight's presentation, which is going to be on event planning, which is part of the catering and uh, banquet sales department in uh, a hotel. So we were talking on Monday about the food and beverage department. So this reason why I chose to do a separate lecture on this section is because this department is one of the most profitable areas in a convention center, a banquet hotel, conference center. Uh, this is where our prof profitability is made. So we talked in the rooms division about blocking rooms and rooms can't be sold unless a food and beverage or a special conference or convention is associated with that. And that's because we wanna sell as much food and beverage as we can with the block rooms. I also sent you a basic uh, profit and loss in a food and beverage department. So uh, most of you will be working on these type of uh, P&L statements when you get out into the food service industry. It's a very simple one. It's one that I designed for the project so that you can see basically what it would look like uh, that you would be responsible for. So you have your revenue, which is your sales and your cost of, um, cost of sales, which is your uh, expenses. So we're gonna do, lecture on that in a couple of weeks. So hold on to that, take a look at it and start getting familiar with it as you're doing your projects. The other thing that I sent you is a banquet event order form. All hotels, whether you're the general manager, the sales manager, catering sales, or a food and beverage director, or in the restaurants, everyone knows what a BEO is. Because a restaurant might have a, a function where they're doing a party or an event of 10, 15, 20 people, which is sold by the catering and sales department through a conference that wants to lease out the restaurant. And that happens all the time. They don't want a big banquet. They want a specially designed menu by the restaurant chef. And you'll, you know, if you have a restaurant that can hold 10 to 20 special guests, then you'll write up a special event form for the restaurant. The chefs of the restaurant will design that menu within the hotel and it's part of the sales. And a lot of conferences, they love this because it's like a special uh, treat. Uh, they feel like they're being uh, treated special. So this is a huge part of the uh, uh, catering sales uh, department. So I'm gonna pull up the slides. I'm gonna share with you first the event manager, catering sales manager, and then we're gonna, uh, I'll show you the BEO and we'll talk about that. BEO is an acronym for uh, banquet event order form and it's developed and written by the sales department, but the executive chef, the catering manager all have say in that because it's part of uh, food and beverage. So we're gonna talk about that. Okay, so um, an event planner we talked about last week works for the sales department. So they'll either work for the sales manager, an event planner uh, could also work uh, along with the catering and sales manager in their department. So in a hotel, all hotels are going to have a sales department. Depending on the size of the hotel will determine whether how many salespeople you have and how many are assigned to rooms divisions, how many are assigned to food and beverage. It even gets uh, as specific as how many are doing corporate and conventions, how many are doing, you know, if it's an MGM, they're doing uh, special events and things like that. So an event planner is in a hotel, but also you have event planners for corporations. So the size of the corporation, if they have a lot of regional meetings, national meetings, international meetings, they're gonna hire someone. And this person, all they do is work with travel sales departments and book flights, hotel rooms, meeting space, and events. A lot of your major corporations, when I worked for them, had their own travel agencies within the property. So when I would fly into um, Ocean Spray Corporate Office in Massachusetts, the travel agency was right on property. So 
event planners, as we were talking about last week, uh, forecast events. So when they develop their budget, the budget is based on history, they look at all the events in the past year and see how many are repeating. So some of the top events, uh, Comic-Con in San Diego, which you hear a lot about now today because all of the Marvel flicks and, and the, um, which is owned by Disney now. So all of those uh, people show up there. Sony shows up out of California. It's a huge event. So if you have an annual event, they're going to go back and look at their books and say, um, you know, here's what's going on every year. And they're going to carry that into the budget. Then they're going to look at new business. And you know, they're, they're going to want to grow every year. You want to grow a certain percentage because that's what the company dictates to you. So one to 2% is usually the growth rate. So whatever they dictate to you, you have to look at new sales. So you develop your budget based on new sales. Who am I going to go after and try and get that business? So you have to forecast the events. Um, whoever is assigned the new sales, it's, it's a sales job. Sometimes it's going to be cold calling. Sometimes it's going to be uh, by word of mouth. Sometimes uh, it's reputation of the hotel. So business walks in. Um, so the event planners meet with the client and the client might have an event planner and the event planner or the catering and sales manager may ask the executive chef or the food and beverage director to these meetings to help design menus and uh, cost things out. So the event planner would plan the event from the beginning to the end. So we said there's room blocks. So that means they have to work with the rooms division. If we do room blocks for an event, they're going to want a special rate. So we have to work with the front office manager or the revenue manager or the assistant GM, whoever is responsible for the revenue for the front desk or the front office we have to work with them on what rate they're going to allow us to sell this event. A lot of that is determined on how long the event's going to stay on property and how much food and beverage uh, revenue they're going to generate from this. Um, so they book a date, they, they block the date, they block the rooms, and then they start planning with the food and beverage team all of the special events. So how many breakfasts there are, are the breakfasts going to be in the hotel restaurants or lunches or dinners? They plan all of this out. Uh, and so a lot of times they'll have so many events on property and then they will say, well, hey, we want to take our guests to a local, you know, top steakhouse or they might go into town here in West Palm Beach or Fort Lauderdale or one of these areas. And they know of an upscale steak and seafood restaurant they want to eat at. They'll say, we want our guests to go there. Then the event planner will make all those arrangements working with the local restaurant venue to set all of that up. Or they may say, we want to go and see, uh, you know, if they're in Vegas, they may want to go see a particular show. So when we used to go to Vegas uh, for our conventions, they would have tickets for us to go to like the Blue Man Group or special events. This is all packaged and put together. So when you show up as a guest for the conference planners or the company, they're going to have a packet for you of all the events and everything in the schedule ready to go. They'll have your name badge, your tag, all the dinner uh, tickets, everything and where you need to go. So it's all set. But this event planner works with that corporation. So can you imagine how many events that are booked at some of these corporate and convention centers? That's why the sales department is, is as big as it is. Okay. At any time, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can interrupt or if you want to add anything to it. So um, it takes a lot of preparation. So that's why event planners keep good notes. They save all their notes because if it's an annual event that comes back the following year, they're going to write down positive things and negative things. Some of the negative things may not be on property. It could be events that happen off property or a restaurant that they uh, took the guest to or the client to and they had a bad experience, they're, they're gonna note this so the following year they don't take these people back again. So the event should be a success from the beginning to the end and the event planner should be at that event 
or the catering sales manager, whoever sold that event should be at that event. They shouldn't just sell it and hand it off. Okay. Uh, a lot of your corporations will have sponsorships, so they might have to uh, add programs and put the sponsors in, and it could be food sponsors or industry software companies. Anyone that's going to uh, sponsor an event, they want to make sure they have permission to promote, advertise, use logos and things like that. They'd have to work with those companies that are sponsors to get all the written documents. They would have to get all kinds of things signed off on and contracts would have to happen. So event planners have to be people person, good sales skills, good background, or very organized. Okay? They have to motivate and be inspiring. Uh, because people aren't going to buy or work with someone that's not very personable, that's rude, that uh, doesn't have any tact. It's going to turn them off and they're not going to uh, book, keep booking their event there or they're going to say they want to work with somebody else. A good event planner is going to listen also and take good notes. You have to listen to your client. What is it they want? What is it they need? And um, you have to make sure you dot your I's and cross your T's and you can't make any mistakes. Some of these companies are paying a lot of money. I've done events that were 350 to 400,000 just cocktail receptions. So again, these events take place at the convention center and the hotels. A lot of your hotels now are tied right into convention centers and there's more than one hotel in many of these convention centers. There's there might be a few hotels and you might have one event that's a, such a large event that you might have four or five uh, hotels that are all part of the, this event and uh, the event planners have to all work together. Uh, your convention and vid visitor bureau. Uh, this is where I was trying to uh, tell Stephanie to look into for her interview uh, to see, uh, she said she wanted to be an event planner is to look into the Palm Beach County Convention and Visitor Bureau and talk with the people there uh, I'm sure right now they would love to talk to students because of all what's going on with, uh, you know, business being lost and trying to gain business. And, and um, you might end up getting an, an apprenticeship or an internship uh, through one of these uh, companies. Professor. Yeah. Before we move on, you, you said earlier, um, like planning this event, we cannot make any mistakes. But I'm not going to focus on the negativity, but as a human being, you know, sometimes we may, um, for event, there's some events or um, they conference, sometimes they call it, like, you know, like, especially the Christian thing, they have like thousand people coming. What about if we make a mistake, how we can quickly, you know, um, um, fix that as a manager? Well, the best thing is to always be open and honest. Don't lie or try and hide things. I've, I've made mistakes. Um, okay. Many, many All times. Right. Uh, Thank you. Uh, and it's how do you address it or how you take care of it? Uh, you know, we, we've come out with wrong menu items. We've, uh, ice sculptures have fallen and broken. Uh, okay. Issue where, you know, people get too intoxicated at events and you have to deal with a lot of things. Uh, you know, it's, our job is not, anytime you're dealing with people or customer service, your job is not easy. No, it's but, not because you. Def it's like you you um dealing with different personalities, and then people sometimes have um different expectation. And as a manager, um, we have like all the pressure come to us, and sometimes it depends the way we react. So our employees even can suffer from it because once you're under pressure, sometimes you may you know you 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 add pressure on the under like you know on somebody else below you sometimes because you want them to move quick yeah and you know you you have to remember one thing your employees are always going to be there working with you the guests and the customer in a conference might be just flying in and coming from a different city so you always want to be tactful in how you treat your employees but i understand what you're saying i'll give you an example everything does come up so uh i was booking an event we wrote out the banquet event order. The guest ordered so many platters of like shrimp cocktail or cheese platter. 
some places charge by the piece or by the each or by the platter. So you tell the guests when you're planning, they'll tell you how many people they have and they'll say how much they want, you know, per hour, per person. You'll say, well, I don't think you have enough. You really need to order more. No, this is all. And they'll say, no, this is all I want to spend. And you're adamant saying, I, you're going to run out. And then you say, once you run out, I have to recharge you or you have to come to me and order more and you have to be charged for it. I'm not just going to give them to you. You explain that all up front. So the event happens within a half hour, they're out of food and the cocktail reception is two hours long. Now the people are getting upset because they think it's the hotel. They think, hey, they're running out of food, da, 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 that kind of thing. So you go to the, meet, the person that, uh, that's in charge of the event that you get, has to give you approval to serve more food. And they say, no, we don't want to serve any more food. So now you have people that are drinking heavily and they're very irate and you're not going to give them more food because the person's not going to pay for it. So that's just an example that everything that doesn't go right. Um, you wish it would, things do happen, but we have to plan accordingly and a good operations manager has to know how to keep their cool. Every, I can tell you every situation that you could think of happens a lot. And that's many years of being in the industry. It's how you handle it and how tactful you are. I've done weddings. Thank it's you. The, you know, intoxicated uh, guests, bride and groom. Uh, the groom leaves with the, uh, the uh, bridesmaid, all kinds of scenarios. And you're in a hotel and the people expect you to fix it. Uh, so it's how, it's how you handle it as a manager. Uh, and anytime you're dealing with people, it's a difficult situation. But <laughs> up front, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do now up front when you plan it you, it's a contract so you want everything in writing you want everything written down so later on you protect yourself and your your hotel or your fellow managers professor could you explain yeah. to me how the bride the, the groom lives with the bridesmaid and how you how you handle that <laughs> i'm just leaving no, I'm, done. No, I'm good I'm, I'm just pulling your leg go back in the <laughs> go back in the kitchen and take a lot of deep breaths He's caught in the act in, a, in one of the bathrooms. Yeah. And we're, getting ready, we're, getting ready to serve, we're getting ready to serve the next course. And here I am, the director of food and beverage. I have the uh, bride, uh, bride's mother coming to me in all kinds of scenarios. Oh and, uh, you know, it's, it, it depends on how you handle it. If you're intoxicated and a fight breaks out, you have to call security. Was and that for real? A for real story? It's a, oh, yeah, I can tell you many stories. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to tell you one of crazy one of uh, many years of experience. I can tell you guys working on islands. I when mm. I was a uh, chef, I had a restaurant on Block Island. I used to fly in on a uh, plane to go to go to work because I was on the mainland. I had two restaurants that fly in and at different events, and this was on an island. So throw that into it. Uh, I had one event where I had to call the state police who were not on the island and they had to fly in on the helicopters to break up a whole uh, scenario. So you plan events, you hope for the best, you get everything in writing and contracts, and that's why we're talking about safety and security. Uh, you have to make sure you either have your own security or you hire out or lease a security. Now, if I have a big conference or convention, I am gonna have security, and I'm going, I'm going to hire security, but it's gonna be charged to the guest. And that's where you go through every fine line. You, you know, if, uh, like Comic-Con, I'm not just gonna use my own hotel security. I'm gonna have security and we're gonna hire uh, them. And the, and the guest is gonna know that up front, that it's part of the contract. Now they can refuse it, it's their right, but then you can say you have to have security, whether we pay for it or you pay for it, um, you need to have that. So, these aren't easy circumstances when you're dealing with people and you throw in alcohol and you throw special events. People get crazy, especially when, when we were in Kauai, uh, I was at the Kaloa Landing Resort and the buses would bring people in and you would tell them straight up, drink minimums and everything else. But when they go in, it, it's open bar and the open bar is only for a couple hours. So people are really getting intoxicated and you have to deal with those situations. Um, and you're on an island, so you, you know uh, that's part of the scenario. So when you go to weddings, you have large conventions, and a company's paying for people's meals and their alcohol. 
not everybody handles themselves very well. So open barriers are a good thing at a convention. Well, yeah. And some of these <laughs> software companies, some of these software companies, people uh, hit their sales quotas. So they get mm -hmm. sent to Hawaii or here in Florida, Florida, mm -hmm. all, like if you're in New York or anywhere else, you're going to be sent mm -hmm. here. You're given a $350 hotel room. You're going to all these banquets Plays that are free. and banquets and yeah, and everything's free. Yeah. And, and I know cause when I was with o uh, Campbell soup, they had a bunch of sales meetings down here because one of their corporate offices was in Tampa and they would have, we had one here in Fort Lauderdale and it's just lobster and steak and people got intoxicated and people mm -hmm. act stupid. And the I've hotel seen, had to I've seen that. Mr. Marriott himself get stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, were in, we, so were in, happens, we, we were in Rio and he was, I went, I, I went to an awards in Rio and he acted so stupid. We didn't even know it was him. Yeah. Was, so he was so drunk. And that, that's the problem. And you have to, we've had guests like that, like VIP, how, how would you handle that? I mean, Thelma, how'd you handle it? Well, <laughs> well, I didn't know it was him originally when he came in, yeah, but we had a, we, hotel, right? we had, yeah, we, we had, I went for an awards at Marriott and we were in Rio and he, they had this, this party on, on the roof at the Marriott and they yeah. had, you know, they had a lot of these, what you call them, um, um, hermaphrodites. So you don't, you're not sure if it's a man or a woman. And he was, he was so drunk. He was on the floor dancing with it. And then it was, it was so crazy. And then um, at the dinner, when we had the awards, he made us swear. All of us had to hold up our head and say, what happened in Rio? Stayed in Rio. But it was, well, I mean, for good fun. But so, he acted, I didn't yeah. know it was him. He, but he acted so, and my, yeah. my, my sales rep was from, the, from Florida. Who knew him? He came in and whispered yeah. me into that's Mr. Marriott. And I said, I don't know. And he said, I don't know how I'm gonna tell you what he's dancing with a man. Oh my god, it was so bad. Yeah, the thing is today with cell phones and everything else, a lot a lot of these incidents I was telling you guys about were on islands, so people didn't even bring their cell phones or it was in a time period where that wasn't an issue. But today with social media, that stuff gets posted right away. And the other thing is you know, they'll the corporations will deal with it today. They they'll leave that event and go back to their corporate office and I'm sure it's going to be dealt with yeah. unless it's well, unless he's it's the someone, corporation so <laughs> you know, but i'm saying unless it's someone way up the um, well yeah. unless it's someone way up the corporate ladder right, right. vice president president but the following but, year you know, we were in her. the following year we were in argentina and he was on his best behavior yeah he didn't behave as well, well he they're not going to do anything with an individual like that because he owns everything but the yeah. problem is you have to separate him into a separate area or something i, I don't know you, I've, I've had a one situation in a hotel in Hartford, Connecticut, when the Mets were playing the Red Sox in the World Series, and I was a young chef, and um, they wanted the Mets to stay away from Boston, uh, so they would take a bus to the games, and uh, it was uh, Daryl Strawberry and um, Darden, uh, all, all the, the World Series players back then, they tore the hotel up, so that whole floor of the hotel was so damaged, they had to close it down for a month and re remodel all of it. But the Mets had to pay for it. Uh, and no one knew that was all going on at that time. So, you know, the, the, there's a contracts. And what I'm saying is when you write these contracts in the beginning, make sure you cover everything and don't take it for granted. Um, because people will try to get out of their obligations. That's why in catering sales, you get a 50% deposit when they book it, 72 hours before it's 100% paid. percent paid. And if they guarantee 72 hours a number of people and only so many show up, they still pay the guaranteed rate. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're gonna talk about when we get to BEOs. So where is the event? Is it on property? Is it on your hotel? Is it a different venue? Who's hosting it? Who's holding it? Um, what's the focus? Is it a special theme? Is it a, a corporate awards banquet? Is it a, you know, a, a sports team? Anything like that. So um, as a food beverage person or hotel person, we love to do special events because it gave us creativity. Professor, may I ask you something, yeah. please? Sure, okay, go let, me, ahead. let me ask. Okay. Let's say 
I, when I was in the travel industry, we used to go to farm trips all over the world. And the one I went to was for our awards at Marriott. So who would pay the hotel in, because everything was held at the Marriott. So the corporate office would then pay the Marriott office in Rio? Yeah, would, they would that, have, that's how it work? Yeah, they would have a, a rate. So Marriott wouldn't just say, hey, I own the hotels and go there and stay for free. Right. They need to have a paper transaction of revenue right. for tax okay. deductions for all, all kinds of different things. Right. So basically they'll corporate, it's like a paper trail. No mm -hmm. money actually changes hands. Right. Just account to account electronically. Right. So they'll get a, the corporate Marriott, uh, which is now uh, in uh, Virginia, okay. used to be in Bethesda, Maryland. Now it's in mm -hmm. Virginia. They will say, this is how much we're paying so they will have an event planner at the corporate Marriott office that will work with the people in Rio. Mm -hmm. And then what they'll do is say, here's what we're going to pay and Rio property will invoice corporate and then they'll just change hands. through a yeah, But that, that, that would be the room though. So every, every, like the activities, cause we, I mean, we went everywhere oh, no, no, they would pay. and then the they food, the banquet hall, everything would be paid. They, so the planner would then do everything and then, because I thought there would be a lot of food and it was a black tie event. So they, so then they would then do corporate would then work with the planner and then the corporate would whatever. have an event planner that would work mm -hmm. with Rio and they would write BEOs for everything. Oh, okay. And it's not like someone's going to give a, a, a credit card or anything. They probably had a PO drawn up, which from the corporate office, which is a purchase order number. Purchase order, yeah. And they purchase would just put that number on everything because Rio will get paid. Mm -hmm. Even though it, it might not necessarily be like a cash or check or credit card, it'll be electronic transfer because mm -hmm. Rio needs to have that revenue on their books. Okay. So it's going to be held just like a regular function and all of it will be booked just like a regular function. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. So a lot of operations, the catering sales or the event planner will just hand off to the banquet captain or to the banquet manager and never show up. When I was a food and beverage director, I made sure my event planners were at their events that they booked. They were the go-to person because they uh, knew what they sold. They knew what they worked with that event planner. Now, did I make them necessarily stay there all evening? No, but a good portion of the beginning of the event, they had to stay. And if it was a week long event, they had to be there most of that week on that event. Remember, event planners and catering sales managers get paid a bonus. So they're all getting flat fees, full benefits, and they all get a bonus. Any hotel corporation you work with, the catering sales, the sales manager, the F&B director, executive chef are all on bonus plans. And that, that bonus plan is revenue, revenue and controlling costs. So a good operations manager has to know customer service. You have to be on your toes when you're dealing with uh, um, guests. A lot of scenarios and situations come up. You want to take good notes at every end of the night. We, we had log books. Now today, it's all electronically. So we have shift reports um, that we would use. And um, we would just uh, take put happenings, what happened, events, any circumstances, anything that security needs to know. And this report was shared with the general manager and the uh, food and beverage director. So if there's something we had to handle first thing in the morning, uh, as such an event, like maybe with the Marriott person or with the bride and groom, uh, they would be aware of it so, so that they weren't caught off guard. They knew what was going on. And these are called shift reports. So um, time management, finance, we, we're going to talk about all that. Technology. So at the end of the banquet, uh, it's, you have a POS system in the restaurants, but the banquets are also tied into the same system. They would have a separate login number. All the banquet menus are prog programmed in there. So if they had a special event, that event would be assigned a folio number. The front office would every special banquet would have a folio number and that number would be, everything would be charged to that number and it's basically a folio. So 
at the end of the night, when you ring up the final banquet statements, you'll have the BEO, you'll have all the sales receipts from all the bars, you'll have the uh, guaranteed account. At the end of the night, the banquet captain, the banquet manager, whoever's in charge of that event has to go to a POS, POS system and punch all that in. So most of the time, the POS systems in the banquet area are in the sales area, or they're off in a little office somewhere off the banquet floor. But all that has to be logged in. And then at the end of the night, it goes to the night auditor. And the night auditor sees that folio, and he just adds it to that group's folio. So if it's a daily event, they'll close that folio that day. If it's a weekly event, it just keeps adding up to the end of the week until they close out that folio. And that means that they either have a check on file, they received a check, they have a corporate credit card, or they have a company PO that the event planner worked out with accounting department and the accounting department assigned that purchase order to that folio number, which is created by the hotel, which is used in the point of sale system. Um, and that's why I said, when you purchase point of sale systems, you wanna make sure they talk to the front desk, the front office because your PBX system and a Microsoft system may not talk. And if you don't have the right software, when you go to put punch in all that point of sale or your sales into your point of sales, Microsoft, let's say, in your um, banquet and food and beverage operation, if it doesn't talk to the front desk, the night auditor won't get all these numbers. And that's a big concern because I've worked with hotel corporations where their IT people didn't talk to food and beverage operations and they didn't talk to front desk operations and they purchased all the wrong systems and they had to work around it and it's a nightmare. So as a manager, you have to lead a good uh, so, floor so, manager. So professor, what would happen then yeah. if, let's say yeah. the, the, the systems don't, don't talk and the banquet is over, all your receipts are not in, Okay, you're keying them in, but they're not going to the other system. So what would happen then? They would be they, the title would be would be delayed. You'd have to, you know, you'd have to put a paper trail to the night auditor. So you have to make copies of everything. Oh, you'd have to create a form. Nice work. Oh, tell me about it. You'd have to create a form mm -hmm. and write all the numbers in. So basically, you'd have to, as an F&B director, you'd have to make a form. What's the mm -hmm. folio number? What's right. the revenue? What's the uh, you know, the expenses, like, well, how much do they spend on the bar, all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. And this happened at Global Landing. We had a system that somebody put in a system into the food and beverage, and the food and beverage was all over, huge property. Mm -hmm. So all the food and beverage systems talked to each other, wouldn't talk to the front desk. So you had four oh. bars, a pool bar that had two bars. You had uh, entertainment shacks that had scuba gear, scuba gear, Mm -hmm. snow cones, ice cream, beverages, all of that would not talk to the front desk. So think of the hand paper trail that you had to make. So basically the bottom line was I budgeted for a whole new system and changed the food and beverage because I could control that. So that system would talk to the PBX system up front. And so everything electronically was put into the POS in food and beverage. And then electronically it would go to the night auditor. And, um, uh, Oh. You're, you're, you're talking a million dollars a week worth of mm -hmm. room sales and food and beverage. One bar in food and beverage, you do $10,000. So you're looking at twenty to $30,000 a day just in food and beverage revenue. And think of the mistakes that are going to be made if you're doing right. a paper trail. But, you, so, but, but, so, but you, so you, that means you can miss a lot. Oh, yeah. Or theft. Or theft. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because most, most businesses today, it's not, they're not cash businesses. Yeah, you have a credit card, a folio number, or a PO number from a corporation. Very little cash. And then you remember I was talking about the concierge companies like Expedia and all of them? Right. They work the hotels now selling all the special events. So there's going to be an Expedia in Las Vegas, let's say. They will work with MGM selling all the Blue Man Group and all these different events. So there is basically a folio number. So that the food and beverage director, if we're selling food and beverage, the Blue Man Group will have the folio number that we just go in and say, here's what our beverage sales were for the night. Um, all of it was based through Expedia. And you might have like 2% or 3% that was credit card sales. Uh, everything in cash sales, you don't even hear of anymore. Because people would have to carry around three, four hundred, five hundred dollars for uh, 
tickets just for a show and they, they just don't do that. So in most people, when they go to here in Florida, let's say, or Vegas or Hawaii or California on re, uh, resorts, they're going to stay for a week, you know, uh, probably at least a week, maybe here in Florida, four to five days, but they're going to stay here for a few days. So they're pre-planned all their events and they pay up front, which is with a credit card. So you're not dealing with cash business, but you have to show that transaction electronically, which would go through a food and beverage account, account number, whether it's a restaurant account, a banquet account, and then has to go to the front desk. So your, your banquet um, will have banquet numbers. So for example, uh, Chloe Landing, it was 1205. So every time, every time we would punch in or ring something in, it'd be like a server number. If you're a server in a restaurant, you have a number. So the banquets is 1205. So anytime we're ringing anything in the banquets, it's 1205. Now, if you had a special event, a group that served for a week, they would have their own number. So we'd go 1205, then we would go into a folio number, put the banquet event number in, and then we'd ring everything in. And then that would go to the night auditor. So every day, you could print out a total food and beverage report every day. I would know with banquets, with rooms, uh, room uh, in service, all the restaurants, all the bars, I would know every day what my sales were. And that's why a good manager, that's why I'm trying to teach you guys what an Excel document looks like. So you can program these point of sales systems to make your life easy. And if you don't program the system correctly, um, your life's going to be a nightmare. That means you're going to be right making, you're going to be making uh, Excel spreadsheets. You're going to be making Word documents for your servers to write down what their sales are, all that kind of stuff. And to manage that as a manager in some of these resorts, it's, it's uh, unbelievable. You, you can't keep up with it. So as a, as a leader and a manager, the first thing you have to do is make sure all of your organizational skills, uh, as far as financial management is in order, then you're going to hire the best people, operations managers, floor managers, that you know that can handle scenarios, situations, you know. And you have to train your team to empower them. If there's a scenario in a restaurant, someone's intoxicated, you need to make sure they know what to do, what they can and can't do, or how to handle that scenario. There's a lot to learn when you're in operations. So here's some of your events, corporate seminars, workshops, meetings, conferences, trade shows, um, fundraising, charity balls, down here in Florida, you have everything, athletics, sports. People come from all over the, the country to come here during the, the winter months to get away from the snow, and they're not going to have a big conference or event up there. They're going to bring it down here. Weddings, social functions, concerts. So one of the hotels um, in Hartford, we were the host hotel for Oakdale Theater, so all the country music stars stayed in the hotel. Um, some of your sporting events, if you have uh, teams that travel, Miami, the, the Heat, the Dolphins, the teams that travel, they're going to have special hotels that they stay in all the time. Super Bowl. So if you know that, uh, where is the Super Bowl this year? Anybody know? No. No? Repeat that question, sir. Does anyone know where the Super Bowl is going to be this year? I know, but I forgot. <laughs> okay. So I think they moved it. I thought it was supposed to be in L.A. where that new stadium was. I want to say Miami. Oh, yeah. I think they moved to Miami. I might be wrong. So that's where no. I was. No? Miami was this past year. Oh, last year? Miami Gardens, yeah. Okay. Hard so Rock. If so if you were working in Miami Gardens you had in your hotel or around that area, you would have forecasted the Super Bowl sales. You would have said, here's how many rooms I want to block. And then you would try to get the teams to stay there or reporters or whoever, some big group to stay in the hotel and do all their functions for that whole week. You know, because a lot of people don't know the week of the NFL Super Bowl generates more revenue than the whole season of the World Cup. Think of that. World Cup, the whole world is big on the World Cup. The NFL generates more in the Super Bowl week than any other 
any other event. That's amazing. So in Miami, all those hotels would be fighting for this, this business. And you could get groups because they got to do the interviews. They got to do the shows. Everybody's in Miami. All the ESPN. Um, it's going to be, um, I'm looking at it right now. It's going to be in LA. Yeah, I think they canceled it because of everything that's going on there. Oh, they, so it's not. Um, it. Oh, okay. They didn't upgrade it then. Sorry. Yeah, they, it's supposed to be at that new LA stadium. I was watching that. Yes, LA. that's what it says. The Mercedes Benz. Yeah. Oh, that's Atlanta. Hold on. Oh, yeah. They, Atlanta. Atlanta? My bad. Yep. <laughs> I was, huh? I was just like, you know, skimming through the sex. <laughs> well, anyhow, so, because of everything that's going on in L.A., they said they were going to move it. I, I thought That's what I thought. But whoever it is, whatever city, I do know it was in Atlanta a few years ago but because of the new Mercedes Stadium. But wherever it's going to be, you would forecast for that. And that would be a one-time annual event. And you want to take advantage of that. So your sales department should be out. Where whatever city it's in right, you know, right now, because it's held in February, they should be out right now trying to get, you know, ESPN, CBS, whoever, all those sports shows that broadcast into their hotels, all whoever, you know, is going to be there. So, so that's an event. Um, so you have to be an event planner. Not only do you book and write and sell the event, you have to be a good leader because you want to, as I told you, my event planners are catering sales managers. If they sold that event, they had to be there for a certain period of time. They have to show their face because you're working with their event planner and you're meeting their uh, top executives. You'll meet them at least one time as an event planner. They want to see your face. They don't want you just to say, Hey, you're filling out all these event forms. You're doing all this stuff. And then, you hand it off to the banquet manager and never, you're never seen again. That's the worst thing that I learned in hotels that happened because if there is a scenario or if something that's not on the BEO and the person that booked it says, we negotiated this, we talked about this, we discussed this and it's not there and you're running around trying to find out who sold the event, that's not good business for the hotel. That's another reason why I made sure my event and catering sales person, whoever booked that event was there at that uh, event. Um, leadership, we talked about communication. You really have to communicate. What's the key thing in communication? What's the number one element in communication? I said it earlier in one of the, one, one of the discussions. Anyone take any classes on social skills and communication? Um, repeat, what, what, what was the question? What? I'm kind of missing you in and out. Um, if, you are, if you have good communication skills, what's the, number one, no, what's the number one thing a person that has good communication skills has? Listening. Listening. Very good listening skills. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that uh, Zhao Chen, you say that? Yeah, that was me. Yeah, that's number one, listening, listening. So if you're a good person that communicates, you listen. So if you're an event planner, and you know, let's say you're all excited and you want to write this contract and you're telling the customer what they need and you're not listening to what the customer wants. Well, you're, you're not communicating thoroughly. You're not communicating properly. First, listen to your guests. Take a lot of notes. The first meeting should be just listening. Um, and uh, so communication skills, listening. Well, delegate means that you're going to need help. If it's going to be a large conference or convention, delegate means let the executive chef write the menu. Let the beverage manager write the wine list. Let, if it's in a restaurant, meet with the restaurant manager and say, here's a party of 10 that this conference wants, or party of 20. Can your chefs write the menu? Can you handle this? Let them establish their BEO and delegate. So when that party of 10 comes in, that restaurant manager or supervisor gets excited about it because they develop the menu with their chefs. They, they establish the whole event in their operation within the hotel, and then they're going to take ownership. So don't try to do it all yourself. Make sure you're getting the right people involved to make yourself successful. If you don't, when the event happens, you're not going to have 
control because there's going to be you're putting out fires all the time. Some companies are very demanding and they change things all the time. So as an event planner, you know, I don't like my room and the CEO comes in and I don't like my room, I want to change or they want uh, uh, certain wines and beverages placed in the room. They want a platter in the room. So they're ordering all this stuff last minute. It has to be handled by the event planner because they're the ones that own the folio of that guest. So that's why you, you need, if you have an event in a restaurant, you hand it off. If you have an off-premise event, let's say they're going to go on a tour to, um, you know, the, the zoo here in West Palm Beach or something, well, go to their event planner and their meeting planners and, and say, here's the date, here's the group and work with them. So when they get on the bus or in cars to go to the, the zoo, they already have a go-to person at that place and you can hand it off and go on to work on other things on that uh, conference or that convention. Very important to have those uh, good skills like that. You won't be successful in this business if you don't build a team, empower that team, and um, <clears throat> let them do what you hired them for. So project management. There's a lot of event uh, softwares now. If you work for Marriott Corporation, they strictly have their own system. You have to go to Marriott headquarters anywhere you work in the, in the world and you have to train on their computer system. They have their own BEO system, their own room block system, all of that. So you have to use their own codes and their whole system. Negotiating skills, uh, a good example where I said a guest was gonna have a cocktail hour before the main course, main dinner, main meal, and they under budgeted or underestimated the number of platters per guest, or they closed a the bar down too soon or something like that. So you wanna negotiate those issues when you're writing the banquet event order form. They'll push back, they may not wanna spend the money. Uh, sometimes they, they you know, uh, make a fool out of themselves when they event happens and they run out. Uh, but you really got to push and you got to stick by your guns. A lot of different things uh, as far as negotiating price, salary, those type of things. It depends. You don't want to give everything away in the hotel. You want the business, but you're there to make money. But you, if you can, you know, give them discount rates here and there and get approval to do that, uh, it's good business because you want re repeat business and people do talk, especially in the day of social media. So budget, the first thing you want to know when people come in and I've done a lot of catering sales because I was a director of food and beverage. So I had to meet with people and I did sales. The first thing when they come in and they say, I have an unlimited budget, then you really listen because that means you can really build the food and beverage revenue up. If they come in and they're a small little family and they say, I have a wedding, I only have a few thousand, well, then you need to listen. And you need to suggest things to that family or that group uh, on what you can do for them. You know, uh, a lot of times they're going to say, hey, I want to bring in my own wedding cake. Well, some hotels say, no, we have a pastry chef. So you as a food and beverage director or someone, you have to work with the group. You have to work with the people. Most hotels will say yes. But they say yes, but then they'll have a cutting fee. So they may charge $2 a person. It's called a uh, cutting slicing uh, fee. And that goes on the contract. Some hotels will say exclusively, no, you can't bring your own cake in or your own flowers and things. But to me, that's not good business. So you have to build a budget. So basically, when they tell you how much they have to spend, you have to start selling them things. And then you have to take what's going to cost you as the event manager and make sure it meets their budget. And then the other part is the overall budget. So you have to be part of the team when you're doing the hotel catering sales or event sales budget, you have to forecast all the events and how much revenue you're gonna generate. This is the largest department in any conference or convention or resort hotel is the banquets. And that's why I told when we had a discussion about franchising, we said, well, why does MGM and all of its properties franchise out restaurants of business, but not their banquet and catering? You guys should understand now there's a lot of money. So you have all these big 
conventions coming in. Orlando's a convention town. Um, Vegas is a convention town. You have all these big conferences coming in and um, you want to keep, you know, they may lease out the restaurants or lease out the celebrity chef, but they all keep their banquet business because of the revenue. So you have to multitask, you have to delegate, you have to be on your feet. Um, that's why you see a lot of your meeting planners have, um, you know, all these uh, iPads are running around with, with all these different things that uh, software systems that help them keep themselves organized. You've got to be very energetic, have drive, very personable, and you have to keep your cool in a bad circumstances because you'd like to say every event or uh, conference goes smooth, but something always happens. Some do go smooth more than more than not, but sometimes something always happens. You have to plan for that. So we're going to talk about the BEOs and the contracts here shortly. Okay. Some of these organizations are outdated, so I'm going to I'm going to um, send you guys some of the more uh, updated hospitality, event, and catering sales. Or uh, there's actually catering sales organizations throughout America. There's actually event planning groups throughout America now. All, all cities have convention visitor bureaus. So if you want to get into event planning, you talk with them. They'll tell you straight out who's looking for event planners, who's the best organization to work with. Okay. And event planners do have their own certification now. There's more than one. So I'm going to research that for you guys to see which one really is the one that you need to have. So... The it's event. called the CSEP, the Certified uh, Special Events Professional. That's a certification. That you the get. one out of Chicago? Yeah. The yeah, CSEP. I have all, I have that information. And I, I wanted to just see what hap what's happening with COVID and all that, with everything being shut down. That's what I wanted to research. Um, so catering sales manager is pulled two ways. They work for sales, but they also work for the food and beverage director. But the way I look at it is you all have to have a very good relationship because you're all helping each other. Remember, I told you you're getting paid a base salary plus bonus. Anywhere you work in this industry, if you're the food and beverage manager, catering sales, banquet manager, sales manager, you're getting bonus. So whatever, what you negotiate is up to you. You look at the industry standards and then you negotiate what you can do. And it's not just based on revenue. It's also based on cost so food costs beverage costs labor costs and and revenue and what you draw in so a lot of hotels will bring in a good catering salesperson and they stay in their area so palm beach county you, you might know of someone that's a really good event planner and catering sales that are getting a lot of offers because hotels want someone that has contacts with big corporations and that are going to draw people in Having that contact list is worth a lot of money to a lot of uh, hotel. Yeah, you have to know how to negotiate with vendors. So my biggest thing in, in um, large events was the linen companies. Uh, lending gets expensive, so you want to have a good reputation with them. Um, they launder it. A lot of hotels now have their own linen. It's cheaper to buy your own and wash it and, and those kind of things. Uh, but you have to weigh all that out as well, to turn around time. Because when I know in the hotels, the banquet and food and beverage department, housekeeping would do all the rooms division stuff first. And then you were like second on the list. So a lot of times we would need stuff and be sitting out of the bags in the hallway still waiting to be laundered. So I always had that backup plan where I would call a linen company to make sure I had things delivered. Um, Pick up delivery, your wine vendors, you're selling cases of wine. I'd be calling in last minute and ordering 30 to 50 cases of certain wines that I would have to have for events. So you have to know your, your distributors. You have to have a good relationship with the salespeople. Last minute, you could be short something. You might be, um, you know, we, I did a Italian wedding one time and uh, 
we had they had a wedding cake and we had what back then it was called a Viennese table which today is, is a small pastry table you might see today is like people doing specialty cupcakes well the we ran out of uh, a certain one type of product and the uh, Italian mother got really upset and she said to me I don't care how you get it you get it here so I had a great reputation with the local Italian bakery and I called the guy and got him out of bed and he ran to the bake shop and got me some pastries uh, if I didn't have a good reputation or help him with his sales because we did large events and he would give me specialty Italian pastries, um, that would have never happened. So those, those are type of relationships that you need to develop. Okay, so end of slide. I'm going to uh, pull up the BEO now. Okay, so this is a sample of a, a very simple banquet event order form. Most of them are carbon, carbon, so there's three, three copies. One has to go to the kitchen, one has to go to sales, one has to go to accounting. So at least three different copies. It depends on your organization, how many you have. Like I told you, if you work for Marriott, they have their own system. So you can see it has to have the menu. Now where the menu would come from, all your executive chefs have banquet menus that they write. So they're going to have a variety of themed menus. And all these menus that they write, they work with the sales department. So each person in the sales department has a deck of menus that are approved by the executive chef and the food and beverage director. So if you have a guest that wants a special menu for a special on, uh, an event, that's when you invite the guests to meet with the executive chef and the director of food and beverage. And usually you bring them into the restaurant or the hotel and you treat them well, especially if you know it's a, a large account that you're selling, you're going to treat them very well and you're going to work with them. These are the fun events that chefs and food and beverage directors like to do. So you write out your menu, you cost, it's actually right on the BEO what you're charging. Everything is on there. This, this is a contract. So if you have, um, let's say, a shrimp skewer, you're going to say how many pieces. Or if you sell it by the platter, how many platters and what does that platter serve? So the beverage would be, is it an open bar? Is it a cash bar? They may have specific brands they want. So in Hawaii, Heineken beer was every, if you, you knew you had a local event because they said, we want Heineken beer. So you, you might have someone from, Bahamas that have beverages they want from the islands. You might have an event that you do with people coming from New York City to Florida and they have a certain beverage. So all that's on there. The price is on there. Uh, and in the bottom of the contract, the language from the company, as far as all the legal liabilities and everything else, are written by a lawyer that the company has as a law firm. So all the legal language would be down on the bottom. All banquets and conferences, the gratuity is added in. The going rate today is 20%, 20%. You might see it as low as 18. So no tips are made, but right on the contract, it says people of a certain size. So it'll say, um, usually it's six or more, but six or more you wouldn't even do in banquets. It'd be in a restaurant, but they just do that in case the restaurant has to write a banquet event order. So you would not do a banquet unless there's a determined number. So let's say it's six or more automatic gratuity. So that means it's 18 to 20% if you're writing it on a BEO. That means that no matter what they say or how they argue, 20% because that all goes to the servers. Now, um, so that's there. So you have your beverage. Your now you also have all your, your equipment and things like that. So if there's special bars, like they say they want a, a bar set up in the concierge area for VIPs, all that is on there. So the contract pages, you could have a BO, you should have a BO for every single event. So if it's a breakfast, a luncheon, a dinner, a banquet, if they're going to do an in-room placement in the concierge or the president's suite, separate BO. So the president's suite would have a separate one. So when you have your food and beverage meeting and you have a large conference coming in, you're sitting down, you're going through, every BEO every week, one by one. 
So you'll, you'll say, okay, this group is having breakfast in such and such banquet room or in such and such restaurant. It goes through it. They're having a lunch in here. They're off property at a golf outing. They won't be here for lunch. When they come back, they're going to be, this group, part of the group is going to be in the presidential suite. They're going to have cheese trays, finger sandwiches. These are the beverages they want. Separate BEO. Because someone has to set that up. Because think of all the people that are involved. The kitchen, the um, setup crew. You actually have people in banquets. That, that's all they do is set tables and break them down. So your setup crew has to go up to the president's suite. They got to bring in a portable bar or it has a bar. They got to bring in the ice, the beverage, the liquor. They set all that up. And so all these little details are written in a BEO so everybody knows. Each person that reads the BEO has their specific area that they read. So the chefs will read one area, the beverage managers, the setup crew, the pastry chefs. Uh, all of them have a certain area on that contract. The, the rooms division basically um, would it only get a BEO if there was something set up in that room that would pertain to food and beverage. And um, this doesn't show, but there will be a signature, contracts, all the language would say 50% um, uh, on paid at booking, and they would have all the language like what they would accept as far as payment. 72 hours prior, you would guarantee the number of guests and um, you payment in full, and then they would say in language uh, what's accepted for payment in full. Those are not written by us in food and beverage operations. Those are written by corporate lawyers. And that whole BEO contract, the standard template that we're using is written by corporate. So if you work for Marriott Corporation, they have their own system, their own software system that they strictly use for functions and events. Any questions on this contract? So on a contract, all the details, who's hosting the event, folio number, that would be, you would get that from accounting and accounting would give that to the front desk. So the front desk, opens up a folio that's just for that group. And that goes in their PBX front desk office system. So that's what the account is. Post as, post means where am I posting it in food and beverage and with the front desk. So it goes the night auditor. Event name, be specific of the event in the group. Payment type, is it a credit card? Is it a purchase order? Is it a folio from the front desk, which goes to accounting? And accounting will have on file PEO, Visa, MasterCard, whatever the payment is. Dates, be very specific. So if you have a group that's there every week, you're going to have a date for every single event. Who's the contact? Contact would be the person for their group, but also would be on-site contact, the event planner. And who's going to work with the event planner? If it's a restaurant, it's going to be the restaurant manager. If it's the banquet and the, rest, the banquet captain or the <coughs> banquet manager, if it's um, in the concierge, you're going to assign a server to that VP concierge area or to the president's suite. It could be a server, but that's the contact person. Someone always has to be on there. And then, um, uh, then it goes down to catering service and all those different types of things. So it be detailed on a BEO it is a, uh, it's a contract function. What type this one says a wedding the time is there, all that kind of stuff. So basically it's a contract. All right, any questions on that? Questions, comments, anyone want to add to that? So Professor, based on the, the order, so even the, I didn't see the dessert section, so the dessert section would be broken down as well? Because I noticed that you have the wine section, yeah. you have the-, the, the I would the, have a separate section like cocktails. For, I would have a separate section for dessert. My okay. BEO forms were um, the long legal, the long legal ones, oh, the real okay. big ones. Uh -huh. And they were um, three copies, carbon, but we always made it printed copies. Okay. And then am I, um, so all the porters or the captains in a hotel, I had a whole area where all the clipboards were lined up. So okay. it was computerized, but we also, I had clipboards. I did old school where we had Sunday through Monday. So the porters had clipboards, 
the food and beverage, the chefs had clipboards. So all of them would have, if it was a Monday, um, September 10th, and they went to that date, every single BEO should be on that clipboard. So each team member was emailed the weekly BEOs. It's up to that group to print them out and to organize them. So the executive chef or the banquet chef or banquet sous chef would be printing them out and putting them in order. And so would the catering sales manager, banquet captains, all of them. So when you went and walked into my office, you saw a whole wall full of clipboards Sunday through Monday. Even though it's all electronically, you have to visually see it. So anybody could grab that board and say, clipboard and say, okay, here's Monday, here's what's going on. But everybody had them. So that's part of the communication. Everyone oh. knew what's going on. A lot of times someone would miss it because it wasn't on the clipboard and that room wouldn't get set up or that room. I can't tell you the number of times where catering sales actually forgot to give us a BEO. Oh, so we run into the kitchen. We need, we need 50 of these run into the setup crew, um, you know, calling. Now we use cell phones back, back then. It was a lot of walkie talkies calling them. We need such and such room set up. So the more communication that you could have mm -hmm. the more organization, the better the operation. Okay. And that's the only way you can manage a large convention center. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, so next Wednesday, what's due is your PowerPoint of your org chart of the segment of the industry you chose. You should have all your interviews done by next week. Next week, half, the class is half over. Any questions, comments, or concerns on anything? Anybody? Um, are we going to be presenting our PowerPoints next week? No, no, you're not. You're going to be presenting week seven or eight. Okay. Thank but you, you want to keep up on the assignment because I'm adding more. I, I gave you guys the outline in a Word document that tells you all the slides you're going to need. It's like seven or eight slides. And you have to talk to it. You're going to turn the slides into me. You know, your final presentation is your final project, but then you're going to talk to the class. Any other questions, comments, concerns, anyone? Okay, so next week you have to do your interview should be done. Your uh, org charts due and you start looking over this budget because we're going to start talking about revenue, revenue management. Then we're going to talk about mission statement, vision statement. And I gave you the P&L. That's like the final piece we're going to talk about, profit and loss statement. And all I gave you is food and beverage. That's not the whole, whole operation. If there are no more questions or anything, we're going to call it a night. Anyone else have anything they want to add or concerns or anything? All right. Have a good weekend. Bye. You Bye -bye. too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you.